Well, good morning. Welcome to my kitchen. This morning, I'm making some cream cheese and raspberry turnovers. I've been on a little bit of a turnover kick lately, and I've come up with a couple of combinations that I've loved, my husband's enjoyed, and I believe this happens to be my favorite, and I want to show you how I do it. My husband's at work this morning. It's Saturday at our house, and it's rare that he goes in on a Saturday morning. So I thought when he got back, I would have these nice warm turnovers waiting for him and a hot cup of coffee. Now, this is the start of my cheese filling. I went ahead and added a block of cream cheese to my bowl here, or my measuring cup. This is an eight ounce block, and I let it come to room temperature, and I've already added one tablespoon of powdered sugar. I have another two tablespoons here, as well as one large egg yolk, again, room temperature, and a dash of vanilla. I'm not even using a teaspoon in this recipe because I'm adding lemon zest to my cream cheese. And I want the vanilla in the cream cheese to add flavor, but I don't want it to compete with the lemon because lemon and raspberry go perfectly together. Now I have about a half a cup of raspberry preserves here and they're refrigerated. That's important because when we add them to our pastries, we want that to stay cold and not seep out into the, the baking pan when the pastries are cooking, and we'll talk more about that later. I've also got some puff pastry. I happen to love this. This makes a delicious, flaky turnover. Now, one thing that I do at the cabin when we have these and I don't have puff pastry, I use the crescent rolls that we all love, and then I'll pinch my seams together, and I'll do turnovers with that. My husband loves them. They're delicious, and I do it all the time. But for today, since it's Saturday, we're indulging, and we're using the puff pastry. So let's get started on our cream cheese filling. As I said, I have my softened cream cheese in my dish. And I've got my hand mixer here. No reason to bring out the big mixer because this is just simple and easy and it's small amounts. So hand mixers do just fine. I am adding my powdered sugar. And I'm gonna go ahead and beat this up. Just let it blend. So here we go. Well, that sugar is nice and blended here. Where's my wax paper when I need it? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and add my egg yolk. This is at room temperature. That way everything blends nicely and the cold egg doesn't cause this cream cheese to seize back up. I'm also going to add my vanilla. So I'm gonna blend this up. All right. Now I'm going to add my lemon zest. I don't want to use my mixer for my lemon zest. I'm going to stir that in and that way I don't break up any of the zest. I, I want just little nice bits and pieces in there. So I'm going to zest maybe about a teaspoon of lemon we're not making this lemon cream cheese. We're just adding a little pop of flavor. This works really, really well together. I've zested this lemon a little bit before and I'm trying to find the places that have the rind. It's very important that you only use the yellow in this. If you get to the white, you want to stop because that's bitter and you don't want anything bitter in your filling. So I just about have enough. This is going to work beautifully with that raspberry. And this is something that you can eliminate if you'd like, 
but I will say that the lemon really adds something special to this cream cheese. A lot of time in your pastries and in your baked goods, when you use cream cheese, there will be lemon in it. And if you're not really familiar with that flavor, you really don't know it's there. So it's not lemony, it's just nice. And I'll show you what this looks like. Here's my cream cheese mixture. See how soft this has gotten? It's just perfect, creamy smooth. Well, I have one sheet of my puff pastry here, and I've put a little bit of all-purpose flour underneath, and that way, hopefully, it won't stick. Now, this comes with two sheets to a package, and this is the first one. Now I'm lightly rolling this out and it comes folded up so I'm getting the seams out and I'm not pressing too hard as I roll this because I don't want this to stick. So I think that that is going to be just perfect. I've also floured the top just a tiny, tiny bit. And when you unfold the puff pastry, oh, this is perfect. It has a floured side. And you always want to put the flour side to the bottom. And like I said, I added a little bit on the top. Now what I'm going to do is cut this in four squares. I use my pizza cutter. I found that this works really, really well. Now I have four squares here and this one is not quite even. So I'm just going to cut off a little piece of that. This one as well. They close better if they're even. It doesn't have to be exact, of course. If it did, I would never make these, but it does need to be pretty close. Well, these are ready to go ahead and start with my filling. I've got my raspberries here and I've put my cream cheese filling in the refrigerator. I don't want that to get any warmer than it already was because when we bake this in our preheated 400 degree oven, that needs to be a little bit cool. And the reason why is when you put these in the oven, the pastry will puff up really quickly and the filling is a little bit cooler. Then that filling is going to stay more in place and not run out if you've got any leaks in your pastry. Well, let me grab my cream cheese. Ah, oh, here we go. This looks so good. Honestly, I could eat this by itself, but I won't. Okay, now I've got a couple of spoons here and I'll show you a trick. I'm going to lay down my cream cheese first and I'm taking about a tablespoon. You don't want to overfill these because if you do, you're gonna have a big mess at the end. It'll still be delicious, but the presentation won't be quite as good. Now, I'm taking this, and I'm just putting this inside, and I'm using the other spoon to scrape it off. I'd say this is a little bit more than a tablespoon, a nice full tablespoon. You can add a little more if you'd like. Okay, and four. Hmm. Now I'm going to spread this just a little bit. Just go ahead and don't spread it all over because remember, this is making a turnover. So we want to keep that pretty much just to one side. 
and we don't want it at our edges because if we do, then our edges become harder to close. Okay, I think that's great. Now comes the raspberries. And I'm going to do the same technique with the raspberry. I'm just gonna take my spoon here and I won't add as much of the raspberry as I did the cream cheese. I want you to get the flavor of both. So this is about a little more, maybe a half of a tablespoon. Now you don't have to add this at all. These cream cheese turnovers are perfect just as they are, but this is going to make them even better. If you don't like raspberry, use blueberry, use strawberry. They will all be delicious. Now I'm gonna put this aside. And I have a little bit of tap water here and I need a fork. Let's see. I want kind of a, a wide fork that has some big teeth on it. And I'm going to go ahead and close these over and I'll show you what we'll do. Oh, I might've gotten that one a little full. Hmm, that's okay, that'll be mine. Okay, let's fold these over. Okay, I've got these closed and this is what they look like. Now I'm about to crimp the edges and I'm going to take my fork and I'm going to dip this in my tap water and I'm going to crimp the edges. You can also use your egg white to do this if you like, but I'm using water today. And I found that that works really well for me and I don't have to do any extra steps. So this is closed. Now I'm gonna do the other three. Now I've got all of this done and I'm going to take my fork and I'm just gonna make two little holes on the top of each one. This is gonna help that steam that comes up from the preserves and the filling to release. That steam has to go somewhere and so if you don't put a hole at the top, then it's going to leak out of the sides. It's gonna, the combustion is going to find some way to come out. And so the holes help that from happening. Now, let me go ahead and get my baking sheet. I've lined my baking sheet with parchment paper. Now I'm lining my baking sheet with a little bit of a butter flavor cooking spray. That's going to ensure that these are going to come off the sheet at the end. And then I'm going to take these. They look amazing. And I'm going to stagger them. If you make the entire batch at one time, I would suggest that you refrigerate the ones that you've already made because it takes a little time and you want to make sure that these don't get too warm because that cool pastry in that hot oven is going to puff up. So the cooler the pastry, the more puffier that it will become. Now, one thing that I could do here is I could take some melted butter and I could brush all over the tops of these, but we're watching our calories. I know that's hard to believe as I'm making these uh, cream cheese and raspberry turnovers, but this is a way that I can cut calories and still get that same golden uh, color and also get a little bit of flavor. We'll top these off at the end with some powdered sugar and so I want to just add this right now. Just spraying the tops of those really good. 
and this is going to give me that nice golden color and if you want to use butter i will say butter makes everything better but today you know what i'm just going to use this well these are ready to go into the oven my oven is preheated to 400 and i even allowed it to just heat up for an additional five minutes or so and that way i know when i open the oven door that my oven will stay hot so let's get these in these are going to cook at mm, let's say 15 or 20 minutes we'll check them out in a minute and in the meantime i think this coffee and i are going to go to the couch and take a little break I want to show you my puff pastries. I'm not opening the oven because I don't want to release the heat. The heat needs to stay. They've been cooking about 10 minutes and the tops are still a little blonde and I want to get that to a nice golden brown. Well, my puff pastries have finished baking. I'm just gonna go ahead and get these out. Oh. I wish that you were in my kitchen right now and you could smell how wonderful the aroma is. Oh, they look delicious. Now see, I didn't close one very well. That one will probably be mine. <laughs> and so they leak out just a bit, but that's okay. I am going to put these on my countertop and let them cool down just a bit and then we'll finish them off with some powdered sugar. I think I'm gonna get back to my cup of coffee. Well, my turnovers have been cooling on the counter. They're still a little warm and that's really good. I don't want them hot, but I do want them warm because that's going to cause my powdered sugar. I have a little bit of powdered sugar here and I'm going to put that over the top. Now, sometimes I will make a glaze with the powdered sugar, but I'm not gonna do that today because this is already sweet and my husband just likes me to finish them off with a little powdered sugar. And since these are for him today, that's what I'm doing. So I have that here. Make sure when you're doing this, you lift it up high and sprinkle that all over. They smell so good. They look so good. Now, as you can see, the powdered sugar is already starting to melt a little bit. Right before my husband gets home, I'll probably just dust them once again and that will be perfect. These look so good. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and put these on my serving dish. They feel so light and fluffy. That puff pastry makes a delicious flaky crust. Mm. Ooh, these look so good. And, Look, I have this one, and that has just spilled out over the top. I think this one's going to be mine. Let me just show you how this looks. Do you hear that, that crispiness? savory and the raspberry balance it balances it off with some sweetness and just a hint of tartness these are so good well my husband better hurry home 
or there might not be any left. You know what? I think I'll just skip the second batch for now and go back to the couch. Enjoy your morning.